I'm in my Land Cruiser. I'm hooked up to my trailer and it's actually towing pretty good. I've got my Miata on the back because I need to get it over to my shop. It's not electric, not just yet. If you want to see an electric Miata, post in the comments. Hello and welcome back to EV Swap. I'm Jimmy and I'm a car enthusiast. I take gas cars and make them electric. Updates this week. We got the electric out of the shop. Drive shaft vibration on the Frontier is fixed. And we towed with the electric Land Cruiser. So it's been a pretty fun week here at EV Swap. Uh, so I put the new battery into the Electrek. The Hyundai modules with the Dolly BMS. I ended up getting the Bluetooth working with a new module and I decided to put it in with the Bluetooth for now. I may go back and add the touch screen later, but I settled on the Bluetooth just because it's number one, it's simplest and easiest for right now. And number two, it kind of uh, maintains the more originality of the car. But I did get the BMS program, so it has the 200 amp hours of capacity which at maximum voltage of 120 volts is 24 kilowatt hours of total capacity. So that's awesome. And I drove it home uh, out of the shop. I got the bumper fit on, the rear bumper fit on, and I got my license plates installed and I fixed up the bracket, the uh, folding license plate bracket on the front of the car. I fixed that, bent it back to how it's supposed to be. So now it's nice and straight and I give it a nice coat of paint so that I got my license plates on there. My bumpers are on there. I need to do the next steps on the electric is of course the dashboard. Um, I'm hoping to get that done the first week of July and I need to get the lights, all of the lights all around the car. I don't think any of them work, frankly. So I need to get all of those lights working and I need to get mirrors, side view mirrors and rear view mirror. As soon as I get the dashboard done, I can put the windshield in and get a rear view mirror, but the side view mirrors I can get started on sooner. Um, and then once those things are all done, it's, it's ready to drive. It's road legal. It'll be fully road legal, licensed, registered, insured, lights, windshield, everything ready to go. And I got to say, I was impressed. It actually drove better than I expected. Uh, I only drove it a slight way around the, a couple blocks to my house and then around the neighborhood just for a couple laps. And I really was impressed with the steering, how the steering felt and the nimbleness, uh, the handling of it um, was really surprising to me. Uh, I guess it's based on the Volkswagen Rabbit suspension, so that should be expected. It handles pretty good. And um, the power delivery was actually impressive. Well, <laughs> not so much impressive, but more than I expected, much more than I expected. And I was able to read off my BMS that I was pulling 385 amps, and I was only giving it partial throttle. I was not flooring. I was just driving it really gentle. But during one burst of acceleration, I was up 385 amps at 114 volts. I think it's like around 50 kilowatts, but that's about 60 horsepower, which is double what the electric is supposed to have. The electric is only supposed to have 30 horsepower. But remember Jim McCullough from the early videos on my channel? He hooked me up with a 400 amp controller for the electric from the dyno sessions. So it's basically a brand new controller that's only been used a few times running on the dyno. So he hooked me up with that. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm getting near 400 amps out of it. I, I bet when I give it full throttle, it's gonna give me 400 amps. So that's awesome. There was no voltage sag, literally one or two volts voltage sag was all I was seeing on that high voltage battery. So that's really cool. The electric is home and since I got two cars now, came into my shop off a trailer and drove out under their own electric power, both the Frontier and the electric, I decided that I'm gonna have a little spring vacation. I'm gonna have my gas powered Miata up on the lift and in the shop and I'm gonna get my gas powered Miata running. It's turbocharged and it's super fun. This is one of the cars that solidified my desire to modify and tune cars and uh, just tinker with them this car is so much fun but you can see it's currently taken apart because it does not run so it's been sitting in my garage for two years before that it was sitting in my backyard for a few months so I'm gonna finally get it running. It is gas, I have to say, but if this engine, the last engine I blew the head gasket, if I have any problems with this engine, it's going electric. So that's, I'm saying it right now, but 
it's summer vacation here at EV Swap, so we have a gas-powered car. I hope everybody's cool with that. Okay, uh, other than that, we took the electric Land Cruiser out on the road and we towed the Miata. That's how I got it over here, is I towed it with my electric Land Cruiser. So I guess if I'm gonna have a cheat car, uh, at least that was my, I don't know, that was my vindication or that was my uh, penance for doing it. So the electric Land Cruiser actually towed really good. I was surprised at how well it towed. I only needed to use partial throttle to keep up with traffic. You know, I only got up to maybe 45, 50 miles an hour, but I was just traveling around the surface streets around town um, just to see how it works. I ran some errands, had to get some, uh, things from the auto store and from the grocery store and I just towed the, the Miata around just to test out the cruiser. And I gotta say the efficiency is very bad. It uses even more battery than that truck already uses, uh, but it was really fun. And in the local area, that's totally adequate. So remember when we built the Nissan and when I built my Land Cruiser, I had to use my gas powered truck to tow my trailer to take the Leaf I uh, pick up the leaf from like the co-park place and take the carcass of the leaf to the scrapyard. Well, I'm thinking now I could just use my electric truck. So I think I'm gonna, from now on, I'm gonna try to use my electric truck as my tow rig as much as possible. So next mods on the electric Land Cruiser, I need a trailer brake controller and I need to fix my trailer wiring so that we can do that a much safer and more legally. <laughs> so that kind of wraps it up here at EV Swap. Uh, we're kind of having a cheat week to get my Miata back up, but that's okay. As soon as the Miata's out of here, um, I need to put in my uh, new center diff locker and wiring harness kit I got for the Land Cruiser because the center diff wiring that I've tried to wire or figure out myself is just not working. It's unreliable and the motor keeps burning out. So I'm just going to go with this aftermarket one which has really good reviews and i'll wire it into the center diff lock and hopefully solve that problem for good so the frontier we got the drive shaft back from bill's inglewood drive shaft and they retubed it and balanced it and now it's awesome on the highway there's zero vibration in the frontier anymore it's super smooth um, even up 75 80 miles an hour just smooth so that's awesome um really this truck is just about wrapped up we just need the carpet and the headliner uh that kind of wraps it up other than that it's ready to go so we're this car is going to be at state of charge and electrify expo in july 12th 13th and 14th so get your tickets if you buy a ticket for one event you get into both events and it's going to be super cool denver colorado july 12th 13th and 14th thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time Wow. Hey, it's Jimmy. I'm editing the video, and if you haven't seen my latest one that I released earlier in the week where we take the electric Land Cruiser off-roading, go watch it.